In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create the vectors for this nameplate design that you can see on the screen. We're going to start a new job and then use the tools within the software to construct the vectors and edit them in order to create this and run you through a variety of the ways that you can use some of these layout tools. In the companion tutorial to this we're going to show you how to toolpath this particular design. So let's go ahead and start a new copy of the software To begin the layout for our part, we're going to come over and create a new file. Under the Startup task, we're going to click on the link to do that, and we're going to set up our material. In this case, I'm going to work with a piece of material that's going to be 12 inches wide, so that's 12 inches in X. It's going to have a height or a Y value of 5 inches. Material Z0 is going to be set off the top of the material, and the thickness of our piece of material is half an inch. And in this case, I'm going to set the x, y, 0 position, or the datum, to be in the lower left-hand corner. So that's going to be the 0, 0 position, which is shown by this red square in the 2D view. And we're going to work in inches. Once I'm happy with those parameters, I can hit OK. The first vector that we're going to create is the arc that represents the top part of our nameplate. I'm going to come over to Create Vectors and click on the icon to draw an arc. Now there are two ways to create an arc within the software through three points, so start, end and middle, or by specifying the center and start and end point. We can do this either by sketching it within the 2D view by snapping to other vectors or just eyeballing it, or we can enter specific coordinates. It's also possible to use a combination of these methods if that's the data that you've got. In this case we might start by sketching the start, end and middle but then may edit this by putting in the precise values as we have those coordinates for the arc that we need. In our case the start point for our arc wants to be at x1 and y 3.5 and then the end point is going to be at x11 and also y 3.5. In this case I don't know the radius of the arc I want but I do know the height and I want the height of my arc to be 3 quarters of an inch 0.75. So once I've entered those values, I can hit Apply, that will update the arc we were sketching before, and then we're ready to close this particular form. Now to create the bottom side of our nameplate, we're going to offset this arc by 3 inches. So with the vector selected, so make sure you've clicked on it, and then you've got this dashed line here, we're going to come down and click on the icon to offset selected vectors. In this case we have an open vector, so what we need to look at is this option here for right and left. When we have a closed vector it's very obvious whether it's going to be outwards or inwards. When we have an open vector what we do is we look at this hard black point that's displayed here which shows us the start point for our vector and we imagine standing on it and looking down the vector in order to determine whether we're going to offset it to the left or whether we're going to offset it to the right. In this case we want to come below here, so as we stood here looking down the vector that would be to the right. So I'm going to select this option to offset to the right and the distance that I want to offset this is going to be 3 inches. I don't need to check any of these values at the moment. I can just take this and hit the offset button and there is a vector that's been offset from our original arc by 3 inches and we can now close this form. Now let's close off the ends of our outline. I'm going to do this by selecting the top vector here just by clicking on it. I'm going to hold the shift key down to add to that selection and click on the second vector. So make sure you have the shift key held down on the keyboard when you click on the second vector. Now these are both selected and we can come over and under the edit objects I'm going to click on the icon to join or close these vectors with a straight line. I'm then going to click on the icon again and that will just close off the shape so straight line across each ends and using that function was we'll join up the two closest points. So now we have a single closed vector and what I want to do is just center this in the middle of our job so I'm going to come over to align selected objects click on the icon and come up here to center this both horizontally and vertically within the material. So I'm going to click on that and we'll just see it moves a little bit. We'll close that particular form. Next I want to take this vector and offset it to create a border. So make sure your vector is selected, come down to the offset 
selected vectors icon. Now click on that and this time because we have a closed vector we know that we want to offset this inwards and I want to offset this by a distance of 3 eighths of an inch. Now one of the nice features within the software is when you have a box like this where you're entering a value you can use fractions and have the software calculate it for you. Now 3 eighths is not too difficult to know the decimal equivalent for but it'll give me an opportunity to demonstrate this and certainly for more difficult decimal uh, equivalencies this will work very nicely. So if I want to do a sum within here I'm going to type 3 divided by 8 and then to calculate that value I'm going to hit the equals key on the keyboard. So as soon as I hit equals that will calculate that and show me the decimal value and now I can just go ahead and hit offset and see the vector that that creates. So anywhere where I've got the opportunity to enter a value like this I can do those types of sums and just remember to hit the equals key at the end of it in order to calculate that value. So let's close this form and now what I want to do is put some hole locations that we're going to drill in the corners of our nameplate. And I'm going to do this by constructing a bit of geometry that we're going to um, use to help us position these holes and then delete. So it's a little bit of construction geometry. So I'm going to come over to draw polyline. I'm going to click on that icon and I'm going to snap lines to the nodes of the underlying vectors. So you'll see as I move the cursor around it's showing me the XY position and the icon's showing me that it's going to draw a polyline but as soon as I get to a node of a vector you'll see it changes to a crosshair and if I click while I see that crosshair that I know that's going to snap onto the node of the underlying vector. So if I can click here and then I can come across, get the crosshairs here, click there and know that that line has been snapped across those two nodes, those two corner nodes. I want to create another polyline um, but I want to finish off the one I've just been drawing. To do that I'm going to hit space on the keyboard, so the space bar, and that will end the line I'm drawing but remain in the create polyline function. And now I'm going to come down and snap to this corner and then click and snap to this corner and now we can close that because I've created those pieces of geometry that I wanted. Now I'm going to draw two circles snapping to the midpoints of those lines in order to create my drill hole locations for those two corners. So I'm going to come across and click on the draw circle um, icon under create vectors. I'm going to enter the diameter I'd like for my circle so I'm going to put 0 0.125 one eighth of an inch and I'm going to come over and as soon as I see this crosshair showing me I'm snapping into the middle of that line I'm going to click and that will create a circle of that diameter at that location which you can see is updated here. Then I can just come down snap to the midpoint of this line and click there and I've created a circle there too. I'm happy with those I can hit close and now what I could do is delete that geometry so I can just carefully select the line and come down and hold shift and select that line and then hit the delete key on the keyboard in order to get rid of those because they've now served their purpose and I don't need them anymore. Now the reason I've only created two of these is because I know this part is symmetrical. So the software is very good at allowing you to mirror things in order to create symmetry across the job. So in this case what I can do is just drag a box which completely encloses those two circles so they're selected and now I can come across to the mirror icon which is under the transform objects part of the drawing tab, mirror selected objects and this time I want to flip about job center so make sure this is checked because I want to flip it around the center point here. I want to create a mirrored copy so also make sure that this option is checked here and in this case I want to mirror this horizontally so I'm going to say flip horizontal about job center creating a mirrored copy when I click on that it's going to create me um, those mirrored parts over on the other side there. Now we're going to create some text for our nameplate. So let's come over and under create vectors we're going to find the icon to draw text. In here I'm going to type the text I'd like to see displayed so I'm going to put the word rocket all in uppercase letters so R-O-C-K-E-T typing that into this area here of the form. I'm going to choose the true type font option here if that's not already selected and then from the font list I'm going to choose the Arial font. 
Now the font list is populated from all the fonts that you have loaded in Windows, either true type font or open type fonts. If I click on this down arrow then I can see the list and I can scroll up and down in the list here. Or one nice feature I have is if I know the name of the font I'm looking for, I can just come into the list and type the first letter of that. So in this case I'm looking for Arial, so I'm going to hit A, and that will jump to the fonts beginning with A. So now I can just look down the list here, find Arial, and select that. In this case I would like my text to be bold, and I'm going to text alignment is going to be centered, and I'm going to put in a text height of 1.2 inches and hit apply. And you can see currently my anchor point for this is at x0, y0. So I may want to just move that across so that I can see that maybe a little bit further. We'll put in a value of x6 so I can see my text and make sure that looks um, like I want it to. I'm happy with that. I can hit close. And now what I may want to do is center this in the middle of the job. So we could take the text, come over and use the icon or a shortcut key to center in the middle of your material is F9, the function key F9 on your keyboard. So if I have that vector selected or that text selected and hit F9, that will center that in the middle of my job area. Now what I'd like to do is adjust the curve of my text and the spacing between it, or the kerning as that's often known. So make sure the text is still selected and over here under create vectors we're going to click on the icon to edit text spacing and curve. When we click on that we'll see these green and white nodes appear on the text. What I can do is click on this top green node, hold down the mouse and just drag the cursor upwards in order to get that curvature um, in there to sort of match the curve we've got for our nameplate. To adjust the spacing for this, I come in and move the cursor in between the letters where I'd like to change the spacing, and I can either just click in order to make those get closer together, or in this case, what I'd like to do is add a little bit of spacing in order to make sure I've got plenty of um, distance for the tool to get in. So to add spacing, I hold down the Shift key and then click in between the letters that I'd like to space out. So I'm going to go in between each of these letters and just click two or three times to space them out a little more. And I can look at that and adjust it as much or as little as I want. If I think I've gone too far, I can come back and just click again to close those up. So I'm happy with that. I can click on the arrow here to come out of the um, editing mode there. And now I might want to select this and to finish off, I may want to adjust its position a little, and I can use the arrow keys. Um, maybe I'd like to just move this down a couple of notches, so I'm just hitting the down arrow on the keyboard a couple of times there. And the other thing that's a little odd about the text in this case is because of the space of the T here, the distance, the gap here, looks a little strange from the side of the R to the side of the T here. So I may want to go back into the Edit Text Spacing and Curve option. I may want to just close up the gap for the R there. And if I click on this red um, node here, what I can do is just drag this around. So the idea is you can drag it around the curve it's on. And in this case, again, just visually, I may want to drag the T a little closer to the edge in order to compensate for the fact that we've got the space below it very much a subjective choice so you can just use the options within this function here to adjust the text until you're happy with the way it looks. Again once we're done we click on the selection mode arrow to exit that. That completes the layout for our design. So let's save the file. I'm going to go up to file, choose save as and from the project folder C01 I'm going to save the file and give it the name nameplate-vector .crv. We'll just hit save and so now you know you'll be able to see the file exactly as I've created it here in the tutorial if you want to load it from the project folder there. In the companion tutorial we're going to go ahead and show you how to toolpath this. We're going to pocket out between the inside border and the letters, create a texture in that background area, drill the holes in the corner and then cut out the outline. So that concludes this tutorial where we used a variety of the vector layout tools within the software to construct the design you can see on the screen here. If you remember we started with the arc tool, drew a simple arc, offset that, joined those lines together, offset for the inner border, um, built ourselves a little bit of geometry and then snapped the drill holes to the center of that before deleting it and then mirroring the drill holes across to the other side. 
And finally, we created our text here that we were able to adjust the curvature and spacing for in order to finalize our layout.